what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on the secrets and the hurdles that we can know through astrology pertaining to moksha yes 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 liberation salvation that which gives us freedom from all the sufferings of this material existence we will see that all right so in this video we will not be discussing on the conjunctions and the planetary placements that can give us moksha although i will give a uh, interpretation of that also i'll just touch on it but this video is more on what actually is moksha and how can we understand it through astrology yes because there are many ways by which we can understand what moksha is so this video is on how to understand moksha using astrology because if you don't know what moksha is how will you know how to get it right so for understanding how to go there how to get to moksha you have to understand what actually moksha is and what are the hurdles which planets cause delays disappointments and difficulties and trials and tribulations in our path to god all right there you go if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with others and those who want to know which are the planets that can cause some hurdle in our moksha all right and before beginning as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you overcome the power of these two planets <laughs> yes 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 there are two planets well let's understand what moksha is first of all moksha basically means what moksha means that the soul the atma the chitta the pure consciousness is not delighting in matter anymore should i repeat the consciousness which is very pure inside every one of us which actually we are yes people say that oh you are having a spiritual experience no you are not having a spiritual experience you are spirit soul lord krishna says in the gita that everybody is a spirit soul and we are having a materialistic experience here in this material world yeah when we go to spiritual uh, circles where there are spiritually enlightened beings then we are rekindling that spiritual uh, wisdom which is already there inside us we are rekindling that spiritual frequency that vibrate vibration which we are eternally tuned to as lord krishna says in the gita mama evam sho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana sanatana means the living entity is eternally a part and parcel of me <laughs> eternally krishna does not say that okay for 2018 or 21st century he doesn't say that he says eternally jiva bhuta sanatana for eternity the living entity is my part and parcel yes so this means that we are always connected to god but when we forget that and we come into this material existence then the next part of the shloka comes mana shasthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati karshati you are doing work 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 my god we are doing things day and night to prove ourselves to prove to others to sustain to survive to eat yes that is what is the meaning of this shloka mana shasthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati mana shasthani indriyani the mana and the indriyas they torment the living entity 24 hours have you seen people tormented by the mind and the senses oh i want this i want that i want this i want that i want this i want that <laughs> tormented all the time yes no peace of mind especially in kali yuga so now which is the planet which represents the atma the chitta the pure consciousness yes you are right it is surya sun no other planet nobody else it has to be surya because sun represents the soul it represents the atma the atma mean word has many meanings many definitions the atma means who you identify yourself as yes who you identify yourself with so if you identify yourself as a disciple of your guru and you are faithfully executing his or her instructions that your guru has given then you are identifying yourself in lineage with the parampara and with the guru that means you are in line with god because you are following the words of the scriptures and that which your guru has told you to execute now if you do not identify with your guru and you identify with your husband oh my husband is very handsome he is very rich 
he's the most popular man and who am i i am the wife of this husband oh my wife is very beautiful she was a beauty queen in her college days yes all the men in the society are jealous of me look at how beautiful my wife is so i am the husband of this wife so that means that is my atma yes atma <laughs> that means i am either the husband or the wife of this person yes why am i saying about husband or because those are primary identifications which we have right or we have the identification i am the son of an ias officer indian administrative service i am the grandfather of so and so person i am the granddaughter of so and so person yes i am the great granddaughter great grandfather of such a person yes these are the identities which we can have or we may have a iphone and we may identify ourselves with the iphone yes gadgets <laughs> i am a proprietor of this iphone i am a proprietor of this nexus nexus nobody will claim proprietorship i guess <laughs> but iphone everybody now everybody will use a beautiful cover because they are so much attached to that phone yes without that they can't stay android galaxy my god so many galaxies in the universe <laughs> all right so now the sun represents the soul the atma the pure consciousness chit and chitta there is this difference originally the soul is chit as it is said in the scriptures the word sat chit ananda sat chit ananda full of eternity full of knowledge and full of bliss ananda is bliss then there is sat and chit so the word sat chit ananda means the spirit which is having all knowledge who is eternal and is full of happiness sat chit ananda but when that chit comes into this material world it becomes polluted it transforms into chitta chitta means that which we identify ourselves with the soul gets polluted the soul does not get polluted but it identifies itself with matter yes so then we are under the jurisdiction of these nine planets the grahas and the nakshatras and then we are born at a particular time and then that's how the system continues yes so that means surya is the one who is a significator of the original chit which we have and in this material world that is known as chitta chit and chitta that's the difference chit is the pure consciousness which only delights in god and chitta is the one which delights in all the things of this world yes so that means sun is the only one which we need to see for moksha because that is the one which we are ultimately made of yes now for that we need to see who are the ones who are polluting the sun polluting means who are always trying to impact and uh influence the sun yes so which are the two planets which are closest to the sun because they are the ones who will torment the sun always <laughs> torment does not mean that uh they will cause problems or they will cause pain but they will ultimately convert the chit into chitta which means they will force or they will allure the atma to fall prey into the deepest darkest regions of this material existence and then comes manasthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati you have to suffer you have to do karma you have to do this you have to do that a man who has a husband uh, a wife uh, kids my god he has to struggle 24 hours even if you are not married then you will be focused on your career then you have to please your boss or you have to please your clients your colleagues my god so many things that means mercury and venus are the only two planets which we need to be careful of yes and they are the so called benefics my god benefics <laughs> this is the result of their beneficence or i don't know what you, whatever you want to say it now this does not mean that they are bad planets and it does not mean that the other planets are only good it simply means that when we are in the spiritual path when we are walking towards moksha then these two planets will pose the biggest hurdles undoubtedly because they are all the time near the sun yes have you seen mercury and venus will never be at the max three houses apart 40 45 degrees not more than that some some say some more degrees it can go 
depends sometimes it is retrograde sometimes it's stationary so it can be bit near about those degrees but if suppose sun is at the end of our zodiac sign then then at max it can be three houses apart so for example if sun is in the seventh house at the end then maybe mercury or venus is in the ninth house maybe but that too is very rare generally it is <coughs> the in the in the same house or in the next or in the house which is 12th from it yes most of the times so that means the atma is always under the radar of mercury and venus yes radar means it is always been surrounded by mercury and venus so now what does mercury represents mercury is the karaka for the 10th house buddh yes and 10th house represents all the actions that we do in this material world so people think oh saturn is the significator of karma yes yes that is true but that is more in a karmic sense of what happens to us from our past deeds but what we do in this world is more of mercury yes basically what we are doing in this world either we are uh, earning money or we are indulging in pleasures of venus right pleasures of the opposite sex wine etc liquids na good food all these things come under venus opposite sex marriage dating and then we have mercury money 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 is honey <laughs> that's why in hindi they say na na baap bada na bhaiya sabse bada rupaiya <laughs> so that means the two biggest hurdles in our spiritual journey towards moksha is mercury number 1 and the other is venus and they will always try and that is why you have seen in most of the charts of people mercury or venus is conjunct surya most of the times or all three are together yes so that means when we start our spiritual journey we have to take care that we are staying in our limits related to these planets if we want to pursue a spiritual path otherwise it's not required you can be as you are you can do whatever you want you don't have to pay heed to any of the things what i'm saying here you can write away go away from this video okay you don't need to watch this all right but if you are serious if you are interested in spirituality then it is necessary that we discipline these two planets all right this does not mean that you have to go to the forest and take sanyas no it doesn't mean that it simply means that we only indulge in materialistic pleasure till the regulations which are permitted by the scriptures all right so for example pertaining to venus we do not indulge in sexuality before or within marriage outside all right we get married and only then we indulge in sexuality that is permitted by the scriptures and then regarding mercury we do not use devious means to get money from others all right we do not cheat people by doing things or behaving in a way that forces them to give their money to us yes either directly or indirectly so these two planets are the biggest hurdles in our moksha yes so now the question is suppose we control the influence of these two planets all right but is it sufficient to give us moksha no that is not sufficient moksha means in one level the gross interpretation of moksha is the person has no materialistic desire that is in a gross level that's like point 0 but that's not positive positive means it is higher than no materialistic desire which simply means that you have spiritual desires yes so for that you have to see which planets are helping surya yes so which are the uh, friends of the sun write it down in the comments <laughs> okay so the first friend is moon yes so that means our mind will actually help us if we want to go close to god yes our mind will help us and then we have mangal yes mars mars represents celibacy so celibacy means discipline uh, disciplining of our uh, sexual life disciplining our semen not wasting it unnecessarily for unnecessary reasons just for pleasure fun and leisure <laughs> if we do that we will be destroyed in no time all right and who is the best friend of the sun yes it is undoubtedly jupiter because surya represents the king and jupiter is the royal priest yes so sun moon mars and jupiter these four are best friends yes and jupiter is a very good friend so that means 
we have to follow the words of the scriptures which is jupiter and the gurus and whatever god has said and we have to lead a very god conscious life so only then if you work on controlling mercury venus that will work yes so if you just say that i will not uh, take uh, too much of mercury venus and i will sit without jupiter it is not going to work all right so those people who say okay i will not drink wine i will not uh, go to a prostitute i will not do this i will not do that only not doing wrong things is not going to give you moksha should i repeat only not doing wrong things cannot grant moksha to anybody the first requirement for moksha is see that's the secondary requirement not not doing wrong things but the first requirement is that we have a deep desire to be with god to connect with god that is the most primary desire yes and for that you have to see which planets are helping the sun yes and jupiter is the friend to surya yes although mars is also a friend so that is why if somebody can remain a celibate life long that is very good but that's not mandatory that's not compulsory yes and even if you remain a celibate it should only be to uh, gain spiritual wisdom yes it should not be just that you are hanging around like a daddy <laughs> doing whatever you like have you seen those daddies in many places na they are not married but they will do whatever they want na? it doesn't work that way mars has no use of its celibacy of its power without jupiter so if we want to pursue a spiritual path only then it is recommended that we remain as a celibate otherwise it is not very much recommended okay now yes if you want to be there's no problem now nobody nobody should uh, nobody should misunderstand me that i am saying that oh you should not remain a celibate you should get married no no i am not saying that if you want to remain then remain happily do whatever you want <laughs> i am just explaining the planetary friendship here yes so therefore whenever we have jupiter connected to surya it is fabulous it is the best thing that can happen because when sun is linked with jupiter yes linked primarily by conjunction or by aspect then this is beautiful this is the best thing that can happen yes now there are other indications which uh, tell that the person can do very good in the areas of moksha is the another combination is the combination of sun and ketu but we have to make sure that this is in a good house if this is in the eighth house then this can be uh, this can be a bit challenging for spirituality challenging in the sense the person can have a lot of inquisitiveness but has to overcome that psychological baggage the poison of the eighth house yes but if this is in the ninth house this is very 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 powerful sun ketu conjunction in the ninth house is fabulous all right and if this is in a fire sign wah as in urdu they say subhan allah <laughs> so that's the best thing that can happen because ketu also represents spirituality moksha yes wanting to go away from this world and delight in spirituality that is fabulous so if jupiter sun are conjunct or they are in mutual aspect or even if jupiter is aspecting sun because jupiter has three aspects fifth seventh and ninth then that is fabulous yes now although they will say that sun and ketu conjunction is not very good yes that is true for materialistic reasons because the person may have issues like self doubt inferiority complex these are the things that can be there now i am not saying that anybody there will be millions of people who have sun ketu conjunction i am not saying that they will have self doubt or inferiority complex so i know people will be writing now oh i have this conjunction i am not like that now you are lying so i hope you understand what i mean that is just one placement i am saying okay so like that there will be different combinations which can do good for sun ketu or can go the other way around yes so i said that sun linked with ketu or jupiter and having associations with the ninth house or the ruler of the ninth house all right so suppose somebody <coughs> is a aries ascendant and in aries the fifth house is ruled by sun and the ninth house is ruled by jupiter as we all know so therefore if in the chart of aries ascendant yes we have the conjunction of mars sun and jupiter that is like fabulous for moksha that is very good especially if this is happening in the trines itself yes because then if this is happening in the trines then jupiter will undoubtedly aspect the other two houses of the trine also because jupiter aspects the fifth and ninth house so 
if jupiter is in the fifth it will aspect the ninth and the first house yes so there you go so if somebody is a taurus ascendant yes so in that case if you have the relationship between sun and saturn here because saturn for taurus rules the ninth house so sun and saturn can create challenges in some other area but for spiritual pursuits this can be very good in the case of a taurus ascendant because there surya rules the fourth house and saturn rules the the ninth house which is the house of god scriptures religion spirituality etc so that means whenever saturn and sun are conjunct this can be very good for that particular ascendant yes and then there are million other things that we see in the chart by which we understand that what can be my chances yes so and along with this if the lord of the ascendant also comes into the picture yes so let me give you an example suppose there's a leo ascendant so for leo ascendant if suppose jupiter is in the ascendant and surya is in the seventh house so now here for leo the surya is not only sun it is lagna lord also yes because leo is ruled by the sun so now if jupiter and sun are in the lagna or jupiter is in the seventh or surya is in the first house either ways then this becomes multifold because the lagna lord himself is getting involved lagna lord means the intelligence of the person is going towards that so that is why any leo ascendant i have seen that jupiter and sun related yes that is like fabulous even for a sagittarius because more than aries even for sagittarius this is true sagittarius and leo because in sagittarius and in case of leo ascendants for sagittarius what happens jupiter is the ruler of the ascendant and sun is the ruler of the ninth house so here sun is also the ninth lord and jupiter is also the lord of the ascendant and again for leo uh, for leo also jupiter uh, jupiter is not the ninth lord it's the fifth lord but it is uh, the sun is the ruler of the ascendant so in this sun jupiter uh, game uh, in case of sagittarius and leo one becomes the ninth lord and the other becomes the ruler of the ascendant in their case yes so that is beautiful actually so these are some of the very good placements which i have seen now this does not mean that you will get moksha that that is that is a separate topic because ultimately you can't say what happens yes these are some of the indications and there are million other indications about moksha and about spirituality but these are some of the uh, indications which i have seen in my uh, case uh, working with all those people with whom i have worked and some other conjunction as i said if the ninth lord is also into the picture and the lagna lord is also into the picture and sun and jupiter that is fabulous that's like the best thing that anybody can have yes so then at least we can inform the person if the person is asking me what are my chances that i will get moksha in this life we can say that yes the uh, universe is supporting you which means you have already practiced all these things uh, multiple times in your past lives in millions of lifetimes and you have achieved that high level of consciousness so for you it can be a cake walk now unless uh, so unless like it happens that their moon is very badly damaged yes or unless they have too many planets in the 8th house then this can be a bit challenging even if they have this uh, for example if in case of a leo ascendant if jupiter and sun are conjunct in the first house or if for a sagittarius jupiter sun are conjunct in the 9th house but then they have too many planets in the 8th house then that shows that although one part of them is advanced but they have a lot of homework to be done all right and what if none of these combinations are there in your chart none of these things are uh, showing up in the chart no problem because everybody has a jupiter everybody has a ninth lord we can always improve our spiritual practices we can always regularize systematize our spirituality yes and by that we will advance and we will also get moksha one day may not be in this life but in some other lifetime all right so the first thing i wanted to say here was about mercury and venus we need to regulate these two planets and without getting freedom from these two we cannot gain moksha yes and the second thing is that jupiter is a very great friend to the sun and mars also which represents celibacy but that's not the main thing here yes and combinations with the ninth lord and with the lagna lord makes this much more stronger and sun and ketu's combination especially if this is happening in the ninth house or somewhere with the ninth lord yes you could 
you can take any ascendant and you can research and you can let me know if this works for you but in my case wherever i have seen these combinations occurring i have seen that this gives very powerful result okay and last combination i have seen is even if jupiter sun are not linked but if the lagna lord and the ninth lord is linked because then what happens the person is always with god yes god or the scripture so then even if all the other factors are not supporting the person out of his free will can advance very high so lagna lord com, com, conjunct the ninth lord or lagna is in ninth or ninth lord in the lagna is a very 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 powerful combination you can't imagine how powerful these combinations are all right so i hope that out of this 10 15 combinations which i said at least something will be there <laughs> in everybody start otherwise i am very sure nobody would be watching this video because if somebody is watching this video then they have definitely uh, done some spiritual practices in some life or even astrology or something related to the vedas or scripture so i am very sure at least one of these combinations will be there but even if no combination is there then no problem we can always advance and use our free will in the right direction and do the mantras properly take enlightenment from the gurus follow the word of god read scriptures like the gita the quran the bible and associate with the holy men and lead a god conscious life and by that go make our way back to the spiritual world all right where lord vishnu resides and i would end this by saying the prayer from विष्णु सहस्रना शाताकारम भुजगशयन पद्मनाभम सुशम विश्वाधारम गगन सदृश मेघवर्णम शुभांगम यस आई कैन गो ऑन एंड ऑन बट टाइम इज वेरी लेस यर ओके अंटिल नेक्स्ट टाइम विश यू गुड लक बाय बाय सी यो